Hey, welcome everybody. In this video, I wanted to show you how we can create a database and make it publicly available. For this example, I'm going to be using MongoDB and PostgreSQL. To start with, obviously log into your Qualify account and you will need to have access to your hosting provider. Let's jump into this tutorial project for me. This is where I'm going to be creating the databases and I'm going to click on add new resource and then select the database that I want. In this case, I'm going to be using MongoDB to start with. So let's click MongoDB and then click start. This should take a couple of seconds. And as you can see, databases has already started, so I can close this. And now if you scroll down a little bit here where we have proxy, we can make this publicly available. Now, before we do that, you will need to have a port that isn't in use. So currently I have another MongoDB database that I'm using and it's using the default port number for MongoDB, which is 27017. And if I make this publicly available, you will see that I'm probably going to get an error now. And here we go. So the error says at the bottom here, bind for 0.0.0, .0 and then the port number of 27017 failed. Port is already allocated. So I'm going to need to create a new port that I can use in order to make this publicly available. To do this, jump into your hosting provider. In this case, I'm using Hetzner here and you need to find your firewall rules. Here on the firewall on the left side, click on it. Here is my firewall rules. I'm going to click on this one. If I scroll down, you will see some of my ports that I've already opened. So I've already opened this for another database and here I've got one that I'm actually not using. So technically, let's delete this one and let's create a new one here. So I'm going to create a brand new room. And then here on the port, as you can see, they have some default ones and we have this one for PostgreSQL. So maybe I can do something different for the MongoDB. I'm going to put 27018, for example, just as an example here and copy this. Make sure that you save it. And now let's use this port here and go back to our configuration and put it inside here and then make this publicly available. Click it and now hopefully if I scroll up, database is now publicly available, as you can see, and you should get this MongoDB URL, which says public. If you click on the I here, you can copy the connection string, go to the program that you wish to open the database with. For me, this is going to be the MongoDB compass. That's what I normally use. And let me see if I can zoom in even more. Here we go. And now I'm going to create a new connection, paste the string here. And then I'm going to give it a name of Radis testing, like so. Click save and connect. As you can see, I have Radis testing and I can see the databases inside here, which is great. So these are just the default MongoDB databases. And this means that we already have connections to the database and that's it. You can start using it. OK, for the Postgres SQL, we can go back to our dashboard tutorial here and I'm going to create a new resource. And this time we need to choose Postgres SQL. Select the Postgres SQL 16, for example. I haven't tried the other ones, but let's go with the default one. And then from here, we need to start it. Now that our database is started, let's close this and let's go down here to the bottom and you'll see public port. So we'll need to give it a public port 543. Let's go back to the hosting provider and the firewall. And here at the bottom, I'm going to create a new rule. And for example, there is a default one for PostgreSQL, which is 5432. I'm going to copy this one, make sure that you save it. And now that we have this rule inside here, let's go back and add it inside here. So 5432 and click make this publicly available. OK, as you can see, database is now publicly accessible. And if this port was already used, then you're probably going to get the previous error that we had in the MongoDB. But since this hasn't been used, this is now publicly available. And now we can either use our Postgres URL from here to connect from a website that you're building, or you can use a database to, to connect to it. OK, I'm going to be using Hedy SQL, so I'm going to open this. And let's create a new website here. We need to give it a name. I'm going to give it Ruddy. And then for the network type, we need TCP IP. But you can also change this to be Postgres SQL. I believe that the difference is that it changes the default user to Postgres. But we also need to change our hostname IP. So I'm going to go back to my server, 
click on service and copy my IP from here. Let's go back and then here, let's paste the IP. Username is absolutely fine. Make sure that it matches this one. And now we need to copy the password from here. So I'm going to do control and A and control and C to copy it. And let's paste it, control V. And now the port number is the last thing that we need to do here. And this is the 5432. 5432, make sure it's the same and save it. Now, something that happens with HeyDSQL, it's very strange, but if I click open now, for me, it never works. I have tried to install this here. It just says, um, make sure that you open the HeyDSQL from the directory where you installed it, uh, but it doesn't seem to make much difference. Anyway, if you click OK, and if you close it and reopen it, here we go. And now if I click open, exactly the same settings, I haven't changed anything. You will see that it works. Hopefully it's just my computer, but this fixes the issue for me every time. And as you can see now, I have my databases in here. Obviously it's just an empty database, but as you can see, I can access it and I can use this Postgres URL if I wanted to put it in a project that I'm working on as well. And that's pretty much it. I hope that this works for you as well. Uh, make sure that you like this video, consider subscribing, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.